picking up right where we left off in the last video with web forms. Now I've added some code to our HTML since the last video. And what I did is I added a label element before each text box. So I added four lines of code, the ones that I'm highlighting right now. And basically all I did was take each label and put a label element around it. And so what we're doing is we're binding the label to the input element. And we do that with the for attribute right here. This for attribute has to match the ID attribute. That binds the two together. Now you might ask, well, what do we get for doing this? We get a nice effect here. If we click on the label now, you'll notice that the text box is automatically highlighted. See that? It's pretty cool. So we've added that to the HTML. Now I was going to add some more web forms here, but I think now what we wanna do is take a look at the CSS. We'll actually create some different forms in another video, but for now I wanted to get going on the CSS. Now one question we need to ask ourselves is how do we wanna approach styling our form? And the first question is how do we get these forms to align? See how this one's a little bit further to the left and this one's further to the right? We want these to align. How to do that? Well, there are a couple different ways. One way is to make our form a table, like an Excel spreadsheet. So we would have rows and columns and cells. That's one way. The other way is to use the float, and that's a different way to do it. In this video, actually, we're going to go over the first way, and that is to make our form a table. So let's pull up an Excel spreadsheet here so we can so I can show you that. And so you can see we have this standard Excel spreadsheet. And each one of these areas I'm clicking on is a cell. And you'll notice the first thing is that this first cell is aligned very nicely with this second cell. That's what we want to do up here. And they should align very nicely just the way this Excel spreadsheet is. So let's close this out. So the first thing we want to do is create our rows, just the way they looked in that Excel spreadsheet. So both the label and the text box will be in a row going from left to right. So what we should do is create a div section for each one of these label and inputs. So we'll do that and we will go ahead and I'll just copy and paste this in here. So we have our div class, we're going to call this appropriately row. And actually we're going to put one of these in front of each of our label and inputs. So each one of these will have its own row and we're going to use the same generic class. And then, you know what, let's close each one of these out. So there we go. Each one of these now is going to be in a row. Now let's actually create a ID for our form. So we'll just use an ID, like I said, and we'll just call this the form. Nice and original, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about the CSS. And the first thing we want to do is style our form. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll copy and paste what we have here. And let's go ahead and refresh and see what we get so I can explain it. So there you see, I've changed the color of the text to white. Now this is the key. We set the display to table. That's the value that we're gonna set for this property. And all this does is create a table, of course, which we know like in Excel has rows and columns and many other things. Now they're not aligned quite yet because we haven't added the CSS property to make these rows. We just created a class called row, but that by itself doesn't do anything. Now we've created 15 pixels of padding. So that's gonna be around our web form. And I set the background color to this green. I actually like this green for my forms for some reason. So that's what we're gonna use. We got the hex code. And then we created a nice border here with two pixels of solid black. Okay, so let's continue on. Now what we're gonna do is create some code for our class of row. And I copy and pasted it right in here. And there you see we're setting the display type to table row. You guys starting to get this? This is the property that's used for rows. The HTML, of course, is TR, right? The HTML element. And the nice thing about it now is we don't have to put all of those elements in here, those TRs, those TDs. It's just that simple. We just set the display now to table row. So these go hand in hand. We set the overall form to a table, and then we just add our table row value to our display property. And that again will correspond for our label and input elements. Those are what are going to be in the rows. Right here, right here, and right here. Now what we need to do is create all the cells for our labels, and we need to create the cells for our 
text boxes. And there you go. We're saying dot row, which is specifies this div, and then we're saying the label right here. And then we use the table cell value for the display property. So that will give the labels a cell. And the same for the input, right? It's actually almost the same code. And then I'm just putting a little bit of padding around it. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. And look, see how that's aligned? Everything's aligned. It's just like an Excel spreadsheet. Think of that Excel spreadsheet I showed you earlier. Everything now is nice and aligned. Now I want to point out how to align this text. You'll notice this is sticking out. This address is a little bit longer. Now you'll notice by default the text is aligned on the left. See how that's nice and aligned? But what if you want it aligned on the right? And actually I prefer it that way. I prefer that if one of our labels is a little bit longer in terms of how many characters, I want it to be actually everything to line up nicely on the right and the extra characters to be added on the left. So let's go ahead and add a text align property to our label CSS code. So I just copy and pasted it in here and you can see text align right. Now let's go ahead and see what happens here and watch closely when I hit refresh. Look at that. Now everything's aligned nicely on the right and the extra characters push out to the left. But if you like it the other way, you don't even have to put the text align property here. By default, it will align it on the left. So that's the technique used to create a table. That's one technique to align our web forms. Now you might be wondering why didn't we create columns? And the answer to that is that when you use the table property and you use the table row property, you automatically get columns. So we don't need to create those in our HTML and CSS code. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video.